In this video we'll discover how to use the retargeting feature of Nevermotion. We'll be using the Bounce character by David Messin and Joe Casey. We'll use a Genoma preset rig that has been specifically created to be used with Nevermotion. Let's select layer 2 and leave layer 1 in background. Now we can open the Genoma presets window from the Setup tab and choose the Nevermotion Genoma rig from the list. Let's hit OK and we'll get the preset added to layer 2. Now it's time to adapt the skeletons to our character. We can use any modeler tool to edit the rig. Be sure to activate symmetry before starting to make changes. Now we can start to select what we want to edit and use the translate tool to move things around. Of course we can use any other tool such as rotate, scale, drag point, magnet, anything needed. In this case almost everything is pretty much in place but the arms that need to be tweaked. Being able to use modeler tools to edit the rig really makes things fast. See how easy it is to reposition the knee using the drag tool. Let's select the color wireframe mode so we can better see the skeletons and their related functions. The green arrows linked to the fingers, for example, are really important. Editing them, we can decide the bending direction for each finger. Let's tweak the finger position and the arrows as well. Now we can cut the skeletons from layer 2, paste them in layer 1 and save the object before sending it to layout. Once in layout, let's open the object panel and set the display subpatch level to 1. We can use the create re command you can find under the setup tab. Before doing that, let's change the view mode to bounding box. This is going to greatly speed up the recreation. After a few seconds, the Genoma Neveron Re will be ready. Let's go back to a texture shaded view. This model uses the new CGFX shaders implemented in Lightwave 11.6. We can select the green controls to test the formation and adjust the pose of the character. Everything works in symmetry. Editing bones is not allowed. If you find yourself selecting bones, double click with the left mouse button or press Shift O to go back to object mode. Time to load the motion capture file. You can use any available format supported in Lightwave, FBX, BVH, LWS. Let's use the Load Items from Scene option to add FBX motion capture data to the scene. The default options for import should work. Now we have our sword skeleton in the scene. If we scrub the timeline, we can check the motion capture animation. For correct retargeting, we need the sword skeleton to be in a T pose at frame 0. To get this easily, let's select a bone belonging to the imported FBX hierarchy and let's select Select All Bones of Current Object. Then we can press Y to go in Rotate the Mode and then N to be able to numerically edit the values of all the selected bones. Let's set Heading, Pitch and Bang to 0. Now, from the scene editor, let's select the null, which is the root of the FBX hierarchy. We can move it around and scale it, so the proportion of the skeleton match the ones of our character. The most important thing here is matching the hips position and the legs proportion as much as possible. Now we can use the green controls to rotate the arms and the legs of our character so to match the T-pose of the FBX skeleton. It's not important to be very precise will be able to adjust the rotations after the retargeting process has been performed. Mm -hmm. 
Let's open the Master Plugins panel and add the Neveron Motion plugin. Double click to open the UI. Here we can perform all the needed operations leading to a perfect retargeting. We can choose the items we want to retarget, define custom presets and store them. The FBX is the predefined one. If we select the bone of the FBX rig, we can notice how its name differs from the one we have in the Neveron Motion panel. There's a prefix and we have to add the same prefix to our items. We can use the Source Modifier option to do this. In this case we need to add the string Skeleton V7 and select Add Prefix. Now we can finally hit the Retarget button. The green controls will disappear, replaced by some magenta boxes. If we scrub the timeline we can see how the motion capture has been applied to our character. As you may notice, since the proportion of our character don't match the imported FBX skeleton, our character's feet are sliding. This can be fixed using the IK option. We can turn on IK for the left and right foot, then hit on target. Be sure to always use on target before using target again. So, let's on target and then target again. This time using the IK solver for the legs. You can see now the feet are better matching the steps, but the legs don't bend enough. That happens because the FBX legs are longer than the ones in our character. Let's fix this. All we need to do is to untarget again and adjust the position scale of the source object, always using the root of the FBX hierarchy. In this case we can match the ankles and scale down the FBX rig a little bit. Then we can hit retarget again. We got rid of the sliding and the legs are now bending in a very natural way, better matching the original motion capture animation. We have some compenetration problem we need to solve. The left hand is compenetrating the side of the character. This problem can be easily solved using the magenta controls. They allow for a second animation layer. That means we can animate over the motion capture data, adding variation to the initial motion. Let's select Ctrl F for arm and Ctrl F for arm roll. We can rotate them to get rid of the compenetration. We can of course do the same rotating Ctrl left hand. We can drastically change the initial animation using the magenta controls. For example, if we want the character to be looking at us for a defined range of frames, we can animate the magenta head controls. We can even rotate the hips and the spine and personalize the walking style of our character. Using this method, one motion capture file can allow for a huge number of variations.